Hello, uh, my name is Elizabeth Tan. Um, thank you for joining me for this session of Read Tasmania's Lockdown Reading Group. And thank you to Jane Rawson for inviting me to read. Um, so today I'll be reading a short story titled Happy Smiling Underwear Girls Party, which was previously published in Review of Australian Fiction a couple of years ago, but will also appear in my forthcoming short story collection, Smart Ovens for Lonely People, which will be out from Bria Books in June 2020. Here we go. Happy smiling underwear girls party. Ha 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 We're having the best conversation right now about Amber's minstride boy leg briefs. Which are really comfortable to dance in, she says, doing a little butt wriggle. And we laugh some more because it really is amazing to dance in these briefs and nobody has had a wedgie since this party started and it's almost noon. I'm wearing hipster bikini briefs with grey and white stripes and a black t-shirt bra with lace detail. And I am having so much fun at this party even though I am not wearing very festive colours. I am certainly not wearing Jessica Zebra print hipster string bikini and fuchsia bando bra, but this is still a fun party. Hang on, it's the moment in the party where we all stand in a chaotic can-can line with our arms around each other and make long lean X's with our legs and laugh because we're all best friends that wear different underwear styles and we love hanging out together in our diverse underwears. Now Verity wants to have a pillow fight, so we all grab a white pillow and start smacking each other and dodging and laughing until our hair is all messed up. Verity's plunge bra is white and has a big blue glittered O on her right cup and MG on her left cup and when I asked her before what she thought of it she said that she feels like her boobs are always in a state of breathless excitement which is a reflection of her extroverted character and she is really happy to be an unmarried 18 to 25 year old low to middle income earner with an active lifestyle and two or more pets. And we're all really happy because none of us is on our period right now because we're all really good friends and our periods are synced. Everyone is relieved about this because they don't want to be like Haley, who did have her period today and couldn't come to the party. She might get kicked out of our group if she misses another party, but that's just my personal speculation because actually we're having too much fun right now to gossip about disorganized, klutzy Haley itching in her blood soaked ultra thin. Ha 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 the successful outgoing one, and Jessica's the sexy good kind of slut, and Amber's the girl next door, and I'm the Asian one. Or perhaps more accurately, the diverse one. Because no matter who you are, you need to wear underwear, and I represent a demographic that wields modest to considerable buying power, and my non-threatening otherness makes me one of the girls, and I am so grateful to be one of the girls. So I wear my not as festive underwear obediently and laugh at all of Verity's jokes. Jessica insists that we do a magazine quiz called, What kind of cupcake are you? And I know without looking that I am vanilla. Jessica reads out each question to Amber and traces the flowchart with a glitter varnished fingernail. And I notice that Jessica has recently added a new charm to her bracelet, a small silver chubby love heart with the initials KH engraved on it. I ask her who KH is. Jessica falls silent. There's a chill in the room that wasn't there before, as if one of us has done something unthinkable, like taken a shit or something. Jessica hitches up her bando bra, which has become lopsided in this long, terrible moment. And then, Jessica smiles and says, Wouldn't you like to know? And winks saucily. And we all laugh and everything's okay again. And Amber is a red velvet cupcake. And Verity initiates a new round of pillow fighting. And we are all grateful. We are so fucking grateful. Later over Kaylin Ginger Mocktails. Amber tells me the difference between a balconette bra and a push-up bra, which is fascinating. And Verity sighs and says that she cannot wait to find her one true bra, because even though we all love the bras that we are wearing, there is a super strong understanding amongst all people with breasts that somewhere out there is a bra so comfortable, so molded to the shape of one's body, that it's like wearing nothing at all. And as long as we keep browsing and buying bras, we will all eventually find our one true bra. Jessica insists that we do a magazine quiz called What Kind of Salad Dressing Are You? And I know without looking that I am fit and I know it's Jessica's KH Love Heart again and it nags me like a twisted bra strap, but I will not mention the KH Love Heart again. Instead, I turn to Verity and ask to see the latest photos of her pom terrier and soon we're all cooing over a phone slideshow of the perky little thing. Some of the photographs contain Verity herself, dressed in a navy blue polka dot halter neck bikini as she cuddles the dog while reclining in a sun chair. And I wonder, who took the photographs because they can't all possibly be selfies? Verity snaps her phone case shut before I can scrutinize the photographs too closely and announces that it's time to eat. 
She passes around a platter piled high with glistening strawberries with their leaves still on, and we each place a strawberry in our mouths and hold it there between our puckered lips like it's not sexual or anything. Ha 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 I don't even know the name of Verity's dog. Jessica insists that we do a magazine quiz called What Does Your Vaginal Discharge Say About You? And I know that mine says, you're a shy, bland virgin. How's waiting for the right one been working out for you? Verity hotly denies that she even produces observable vaginal discharge. And Amber says that she uses Libra panty liners to keep her underwear fresh. And Verity has a look in her eye like she's taking mental notes. On the page after the vaginal discharge quiz is an interview with Kit Harrington from Game of Thrones, and we all sigh and wish we could be Rose Leslie as Kit Harrington's on-screen love interest and Rose Leslie as Kit Harrington's real-life sweetheart. On the opposite page of the interview is a tear-out black-and-white poster of Kit Harrington's tousled curls and Kit Harrington's soulful chocolate stare and Kit Harrington's white button-down shirt that foretells the hard muscular terrain of Kit Harrington's abs. And as I am falling into the smiling shadows beneath Kit Harrington's eyes, I realize that Kit Harrington's initials are K-H. I stop falling and I bite my lip because I know I can't say anything. I just can't say anything. I will not survive if I say anything. I will never be allowed at another underwear party again. So I stare at Kit Harrington, overcome by desire, aching with the certainty that Kit Harrington would never love me because when I did the what kind of man could possibly want you quiz, I've got steady bookish nice guy and Kit Harrington seems more like a brooding of a thinker dedicated to his craft. But then I notice Amber's eye drawn to the interview and the abbreviation KH for each of Kit Harrington's answers. Jessica, she exclaims, do you love Kit Harrington? At first, Jessica deflects, of course, we all love him. But then Amber takes Jessica's wrist in her hand and overturns the silver love heart so the KH is exposed. No, you really love him, Amber says. Jessica sits there frozen and uncomfortable as if one of us has done something unthinkable, like farted or something. And Jessica withdraws her wrist from Amber's grasp. And I know then, absolutely, that Jessica doesn't actually know what KH stands for. Just like Verity's dog doesn't have a name. And the whole afternoon begins to crumble. And I am spurred by a determination that I can hardly understand. To save Jessica. To save all of us. So I announce... I know. I know what KH stands for. And for the first time ever, all of my friends are looking at me. I have their attention. My face turns pink and I flounder and I can feel the seat of my briefs creeping up perilously close to my ass crack. I blurt out, KH stands for Kitty Hellcat, which is Jessica's secret crime fighting alter ego. Everyone is silent. The party teeters, knife edged. Jessica is staring at me, and slowly, she smirks. How did you know I was Kitty Hellcat, Jessica asks. And I say, because I'm a witch. And a thrilling regal warmth unrolls through my body, and I draw myself up to my full height, and I say it again, I am a witch! Jessica springs to her feet and says, I want to join you. Jessica and I stand up on the bed high above everybody else and shriek with laughter and Amber shouts, I am the queen of all the spiders! And Verity shouts, I am a malevolent self-learning operating system! Jessica and I help them climb up on the bed and we are so tall we can grow through the ceiling and so high our lungs are filled with legends and ghosts and songs of our bravery. We jump off the bed. We tip the contents of Amber's pencil case onto the floor and pop the lids off sharpies and draw on our arms and each other's arms and on the walls with big fisted letters and slashes and curse words. We are overtaken by some mad urge to make, to create, to mind fuck and we strip the sheets from the bed and soon the room is festooned with doona shreds and Jessica has fashioned a bitching cape for herself and I snap the slats from the base of the bed and create ragged effigies of every girl here. Amber grabs handful after handful of strawberries and shoves them into her mouth and smears the red fruit all over her body and we all join in until juice runs down our necks and into our bras and cleavage. We set upon the poster of Kit Harrington to divide him between us. Each girl may do with Kit Harrington as they wish. Verity makes a little origami chatterbox and Amber screws him up into little paper balls and swallows them and Jessica rearranges the letters of his name into hang, knit, riot and I paste his eyes into an effigy and then set fire to it with a lighter that Verity confesses that she always smuggles into our parties. Then we decide that we shouldn't be so hard on poor Kit Harrington so we put the fire out and each girl and each give the scorched effigy a kiss and tuck him into what is left of the bed. 
And we all agree that this is the best party we've ever had. And Amber hacks up a slimy ball of Kit Harrington. <laughs> Jessica sighs and says that we're her best friends. And it's so nice to have best friends. And she is right. We huddle together like bunnies under a nest of Duna shreds until we fall asleep.